Hi, everybody. Welcome to Georgia Southern Football 96. I'm Scott Pierce, along with Eagles head coach Frank Elwood. And it's the last game of the season, the Eagles versus the Flames of Liberty. And, Coach, really, Georgia Southern has something to prove here. The last game of the season, they need to come out with a big win. Well, it was, um, you know, in some aspects, it was a trying year for some of our players. Uh, it would, there was some um, unsettled feelings right. and it was time to put it all to a close they announced a coach this week right. which was uh, I think that had a lot to do with selling everybody down and it was just a matter of okay something that had been in limbo now is not in limbo anymore there is a coach right. uh, if he'll be here let's get going and I think the players had that feeling also I think they felt that this is a good chance to uh, do something for a senior class that mm -hmm. uh, that suffered through this last year. Liberty has had a rough year so far. They uh, stumbled uh, with uh, losing, I think, after winning their first one. I think they lost five in a row, I believe. Is they that were, correct? Yeah, they were five and five coming into right. the game, but they were on a winning streak when they came down here. Right. They'd won four in a row, and it... Uh, and, of course, they have some talented football players. And no, and no easy game last year in Lynchburg. Remember that uh, game was 7-6. Right. to six. In, a horrible, in horrible weather conditions. Exactly. At least we showed them better weather when they came down <laughs> to visit us. And Georgia Southern really hoping to get off on a winning note to wrap things up here on the season. We'll have a look at the first half highlights from... And welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 96. The Eagles come into the game against Liberty uh, having a rough season uh, with a record of 3-7. and seven. But, Coach, what was the feeling going into the Liberty game? You, we had just named a, a new coach for next year and Paul Johnson, so bringing the, the true flex bone option uh, back to Georgia Southern. What was your feeling to get the players sort of going for this last game? Well, you always get a, a sense of relief at the end of a season, no matter if you've got a winning record or losing record, because they've put so much into it since mm -hmm. early August. Um, I think they're glad to see it come to an end. The uh, staff, because you work so many hours, uh, is happy to see it come to an end. And it's uh, you want to you want to do something for the seniors, mm -hmm. and you want to. In this case, we thought it was important that there be a springboard for the future. Right, and exactly that's look uh, looks like what happened at Paulson Stadium with Georgia Southern with a big victory. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. Liberty comes to town and. Again, you know, the past couple of weeks, wind has been a factor in it's, this game. Uh, this year seems like there's more wind than there has been in the past. It's a great day, though, for football. Right. It's cool, sunny, or clear. Uh, and uh, a lot of bands. <laughs> a lot of music. With in little Paulson short State. fans, though, I notice. Yep. And uh, Liberty was going to win the toss here, so they're going to defer to the second half and kick off to Georgia Southern. And it's evident, first kick sails right into the end zone and out of the back of the end zone. That was a line drive, that's for sure. Georgia Southern takes over, and on the first play, we run the option to the right. Kenny on the pitch to Tobias, and Tobias gets a good block out of, our, our, uh, out of Benny Cunningham, and that springs him down the sideline. It's a good way to start the game with a big run. Tobias went 49 yards, then give it off to Roderick. Roderick had a great day again. He's Not really unexpected because he's had a great season. Exactly. About 172 yards. See Chris Chambers with the big field goal into the win. Right, and he made all these extra points, too. It was really a, a good performance for a true freshman, believe me. And, and I think Chris has got a great future. Georgia Southern leading now 3 to nothing. We give the ball to Liberty, and I tell you, the Eagle defense really came up strong. They did a great job in that first half. At, uh, Edward Thomas, Lee Brooks, Zeke Roberts, Von Sellies Allen, the... Cloris Williams, that, that up front defense has really played well now for about three weeks. They've just have, they've matured and and got some pride in what they do, and they've, they've done a great job. Travis Taylor's going to take the punt from Liberty, and he's going to get uh, some good running room here. Head down the sideline, there was a great block at the corner. I didn't see who got it. I think it was James Dickerson. I'm not sure. I think that's who it was. You've got Greg Hill in at quarterback now. Right, Greg came in. Kenny's been a little bit slow because of a severe beating he's had in the last couple of weeks, and uh, uh, we just thought Greg would give us a little change of pace, and by golly, he did. Yeah, There's and, Roderick. An option quarterback doesn't have the luxury that a dropback quarterback does. They can see up. Roderick with the touchdown run there. Nice run from Roderick, 20-yard TD. Georgia Southern with the Chris Chambers extra point here. It's going to go up 10 to nothing on Liberty. And you got to feel good about the way things are going. Well, at, at this point in time, you know, Unfortunately, a game is uh, not over until it's over, and we've learned that ourselves many times this year. So we're just going to keep playing, and I, uh, I think the kids are in uh, 
They're in a good frame of mind at this point. They've got, they're gaining more confidence as the game goes on, which is important. The defense holds a punt, and Travis bobbles it a little bit. Lucky to get the ball back. Travis did a great job covering that. He's one of those guys that if that ball's in the air, he wants to catch it, and he doesn't much care where it is. He's going to go after it. Greg throws a long pass. It's intercepted by Liberty. So they're going to take over on their side of the field. And great pressure and a good sack by Edward Thomas. Edward Thomas, what a great day he had. I don't know how many total sacks he had, but he had, he, and he was working against a gigantic offensive tackle. <laughs> exactly. right? I mean, that guy was huge. But the defense, again, performs well, force, forces Liberty to punt. Travis, again, having a little trouble with that one. How that ball came out of there, I don't know. We ended up with it on our own four-yard line because we also had a blocking in the back penalty. So Greg Hill's going to take it up and get you about seven yards on the keeper to the left. We got us a little running room. And Roderick, another nice run. He has really turned into a great back. He's, he's doing very well, and he, he, I just think he's got another great year in him, which uh, he's going to have to have. He's one of the returning seniors, and right. uh, he's just going to have to have a good year. Greg with a nice pass down to Corey Joyner. Corey Joyner, right. And Corey jumped uh, and lost his balance coming down, or he might have mm -hmm. taken it in the end zone. Greg's going to sneak it in for a touchdown there. The Eagles really playing well offensively and defensively here. 17 to nothing up on Liberty. And they, they had one there. We got a yep. break. Yep. And um, the guy was open. The ball was placed there. He just couldn't hold on to it. Quarterback throws a little too hard for his tight end there. And they bring in another quarterback. Looks like uh, a running type quarterback, but that uh, doesn't help him much there. I'm not crazy when somebody substitutes quarterbacks. We had that happen to us earlier yep. this season. Exactly. Appalachia State. Right. There's Travis again. Gets his hands on the ball. A good return there. Georgia Southern in good position. Greg's going to take it up, and nice run here. He's going to get about 25 yards. It's the mosquito. <laughs> it's about the size of Greg. He has gained a little bit of weight, and there goes Roderick again. And Georgia Southern's offense, you can tell it's just really clicking right now. Chambers adds the extra point, and right that puts uh, Georgia Southern up now, I think, 24 to nothing. And that's the way the first half is going to end. The Eagles playing well on both sides of the ball. You have to feel good going into the locker Well, we do. They had one first down in the first half and only three net yards. Um, uh, that's, um, that's a remarkable first half of defense. Believe me, and with 24 points, that's, uh, we, we do feel good. The only thing we have to worry about now is you've got to play 30 more minutes. Exactly. We're going to see how that shapes up coming up right on the other side of this break. We'll also have a look at our halftime feature. Stay tuned. There's more Georgia Southern football, 96 to come. And welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 96. The Eagles leading Liberty 24 to nothing at halftime. And coach, you got to feel good because the offense is playing well, and the defense held Liberty to only three net yards in the first half. It's, uh, it, it's a good feeling when you can go in at halftime that way. Um, the thing that you, you concern yourself with are some minor adjustments, mm -hmm. uh, maybe some possible substitutions, an injury report that we didn't know at the time, but Edward Thomas had broken his hand. Right. Um, and you've got to take a, a viewpoint that the game is 0-0 zero because zero you have to go win the second half, too. Exactly. And one of the substitutions you did make yesterday was bring in Greg Hill at quarterback for Kenny Robinson. You know, Kenny's been around now for three years. He is the commander of the offense, has done very well running the option. Let's take a special look at Kenny Robinson. Despite a disappointing season, quarterback Kenny Robinson still favors the option offense. Well, I think the, um, the option was very successful and is very successful for us. Um, we have opened it up passing a little bit more, you know, each year, and I think that that uh, has helped out the running game a lot. And uh, hopefully, we will pass a little more. But the option, you know, as you can see this season, has uh, worked really well for us because we've been the second um, rushing team in the nation, and uh, we've we've broke all, about all the records that you can possibly break here. So, um, you know, the option has worked really well for us. I guess a set way I can describe handling is just you have to take it week by week, day by day, and uh, you know, try not to let the critics get to you mainly because uh, everybody has their own, own opinion of you and you just try to have, you have to try to um, focus on what your goals are and try to accomplish those and not worry about what everybody else thinks. Being the most recognized player on offense, 
Kenny often shifts his praise to his teammates. They really, has, they really haven't got the recognition that they deserve this year, especially because of our misleading uh, record. We're three and seven right now, and you know our guys just go out. They go out every day and they really work hard. And we have a lot of great, great athletes. And we have a lot of guys that are breaking records. We just um, haven't been seeming to get the wins. We have uh, Maurice Bing, who was three catches away from being the all-time receiver. Uh, in, the, in Georgia Southern, and then uh, Roderick Russell, who just broke a thousand yards rushing last week, and then we have um, our offensive linemen who have uh, opened up the holes for Roderick, who made it possible for him to, to gain those yards and, and make all those good runs. So, uh, you know, I just like to congratulate my team for the effort and, and for um, continuing to work hard, even though the season had gone the way we planned. Though the season didn't go as planned, the Eagles are looking forward to next year, where there will be a new head coach to guide the team. And Kenny does a great job running the offense. We would like to thank Chris Hartley and Deidre Jones for putting that piece together for us. A lot of football left to go, but before we get to the second half, let's take a look at the player's point of view in our From the Locker Room segment. I really congratulate the team. All I did was just did my job and catch the ball. Well, anytime you get in a season like we had with, you know, new coaches and new head coach and, you know, different things going on, you know, team has to come together. As a team, we came together, but uh, the record didn't show how, how really good we were. And uh, as a senior, it's nothing better to finish off, you know, your last game of college football with a victory. And you know, that's what we did tonight. Yeah, I think it was finally we um, came out and put a complete game together. Um, we knew we were capable of doing this all season, but I mean, too bad it had to be the last game of the year, but at least we finally did it. Um, you know, the line, everybody had their blocks mostly. And, uh, you know, in the past, you know, Earthwind broke free from the corner, you know, and I just got it there for him. Most of the people we're talking to tonight won't be back next year. You will be. Uh, How does it feel winning the last one, uh, setting you up for next season? Um, this win will feel, it's feel very uh, good for us. You know, it's going to help us into uh, the workouts over, over the all season, you know, and we're going to, we ended on a positive note. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 96. I'm Scott Pierce along with Eagles head coach Frank Elwood. And the Eagles playing their last 30 minutes of football for this season, and they want to take it out on a winning note. Well, we, um, we talked about it at halftime. you got to go out and win the second half. We had a nice lead at the first half, but we we got to do it again. Let's see how the second half plays out as we take a look at the highlights now. Liberty gets the ball, and they're already on offense, and they're going to come out moving the ball, which is different from the first half. They did some, uh, they made a few adjustments, and of course, I don't think our motivation level has quite reached yet uh, what it should in the second half. I, uh, no explanation for that. Um, sometimes you wonder if a halftime is good for anybody. Big run by their tailback here is going to pick them up uh, about 25 yards, get them across right. the midfield mark. Then he comes right back with the uh, trap and takes it down to the one. And George Southern did a good job of keeping them out of the end zone for two plays up the middle, but then they pitch it wide to the left and string it out and lost get it in. Our, lost our leverage at the corner, and they, they got it in made it 24-7. George Southern comes right back, and Roderick Russell with a big run. I was hoping Roderick would make it all the way. As great a year as he's had, uh, he just didn't quite make it. But it was a great, great effort. 69-yard run for Roderick, so we give it back to him. He gets the ball a little closer now, down to about the two. And then Greg Hill is going to put it in for the touchdown. Greg went airborne to get that one, making it 31 to 7 when we get the extra point. We hold Liberty on defense, so Georgia Southern comes back out and a big pass completion to Maurice Bean. That uh, set the record for single season receptions at Georgia Southern. That's uh, it's a, a great catch by a great young man in Maurice Bain. And another great catch by Maurice, a Savannah High product, and he's a senior, and we hate to see him go, but he gets to go on to the, the rest of life now. Now he's got to go to work for a living, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> There's Greg on the option and into the end zone. And Chris back again with a, another one of his extra points. And that's going to make it 38-7, to seven, but Liberty's not finished for the day. They come back out. Their quarterback, Ben Anderson, is going to hit what looks like I'm taking their tight end. He's a big guy. There's, they're a traditional pro team, and with Coach Rotigliano, they've... Uh, they pretty much use all the tricks of the professional trade, the screens, the draws, right. and, the, and the deep passes. Anderson hits another one to pick up about 20. 
Good pressure here, throws in the end zone, incomplete. Travis had that one covered. But he is going to strike here. Once he again, hits, to the tight end, right. Hits the tight end, so Liberty has now uh, scored 14 points on the day, but we come out and we hand the ball right back to him deep in our own territory. It makes you a little nervous to see the ball on the ground. And then Hal Carter steps forward and does a return favor for us and gets it back. So Georgia Southern now uh, gets the ball and they're moving again. Big interception by Hal there. And he'll be back next year. Beautiful pass here from Greg to Earthwind Earth and right. Fire Moreland. <laughs> and he can run. There was no question of whether anybody was going to catch him or not. Believe me, Earthwind's got great speed. And to 14 Georgia Southern and that's the way it will wrap up with the Eagles taking a big win and really a positive feeling after that game I felt that you know first time this year it felt really good it did and it's, it's a lot of fun and welcome back the Eagles wrap up the 96 season on a winning note uh, taking the record to four and seven and coach it's a good way to make that transition into the next year well that was one of our goals as we as we laid out our week plans and uh, uh, fortunately we were able to accomplish what we set out to do we got a, a very nice compliment for you yesterday I was standing on the sidelines and during the game there was a brief pause in the game and Sam Baker, the athletic director, was standing on the sidelines. One of the referees motioned him over during the pause and just said very simply to Sam Baker, your coach is a class act. That's, um, I'm glad to hear that because my, some of the officials, I don't think all of them feel that quite, quite that way about me after this season. But uh, you do leave it as an interim season, and you came in under tough circumstances, but uh, you get to move back now to your assistant athletic director position. Right, and uh, you know, it was a fun year for me. I enjoyed being with the players. That's why I got into coaching originally, and um, it was exciting, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of fun. I, I feel bad for the seniors, maybe, that they didn't quite win as many as they wanted to, but all in all, it was a good season. I think so as well. It's going to be great to see how the Eagles fare next year. A new coach in, Paul Johnson. A lot of great things on the horizon. Thanks for joining us this year. For Coach Frank Elwood, I'm Scott Pierce, and this has been Georgia Southern Football 96. <laughs>